Have you ever looked at the plants in your garden and said, why won't you grow? Don't you want to live? Perhaps you've Googled this exact question. And the truth is, there are hundreds of reasons why your plants won't grow or won't produce food or get attacked and killed by pests and disease. There's one factor that I believe ails nearly every gardener that I know, and it can be boiled down to a single word, microbes. Yes, microbes is kind of the buzzword of the past decade. But despite probably everyone knowing the word, my impression is that the very, very few people know exactly what they are and why microbes are important. But before we get into that, let's go back to the advice that you're likely to get from the experts on the Google about why your plants aren't growing. I took a look at the top 10 results and even a couple AIs and after sending it this question, the top three reasons I learned were one, not enough or too much water, two, not enough or too much sunlight, depending on the plant, and number three, bad soil. Now the first two reasons here why your plants won't grow seem like pretty simple fixes, but bad soil, what does that even really mean? Well, the experts seem to suggest a few ways to improve your soil, fertilizer, till it, etc. But if you're one of those no-till regenerative hippies like myself, those options simply aren't good enough. Now, there are many paths to be taken on the road toward good soil health, but there's one that the experts rarely offer as a solution, and that is to improve your soil biology. And frankly, the reason for this is that it's not marketable. Or to put it bluntly, there's not enough money to be made off of you, consumers like you and me looking to grow better and bigger plants faster. Because you see, microbial diversity can't really be bought. Now you might say, Taylor, you lack the most elementary knowledge of plant nutrition. Or maybe you'd say, dude, I literally just bought soil microbes off of Amazon. To which I would say, respectively, that seems a bit rude, even if it's true, and Fair point, you can technically buy in microbial diversity. There's just one problem with that. You have almost no way of knowing that those microbes will survive past the week, let alone from one season to the next. But why do we want microbes to survive in the first place? Well, the short version is microbes do a lot of the work for you in taking care of your plants. They break down organic material into bioavailable nutrients for your plants. They, then they hand deliver those nutrients to your plant roots in exchange for root exudates. These guys improve soil tilth, they can help protect your plants from disease, and if all of this sounds too good to be true, it's because it sort of is. You see, we simply can't expect lab-grown microbes to thrive in every environment with its unique climate and conditions. It would be like if you sent me to live in North Dakota, the permafrost, the flatness, I simply wouldn't survive. And that's why what I'm gonna tell you about is so crucial for gardeners and farmers and really just people like you to understand. There are microbes uniquely suited for your exact environment, climate, and conditions. You just have to catch them. In fact, and this is the good news, people have been using indigenous microorganisms or IMOs to grow their crops for thousands of years. More recently, over the past few decades, a man named Han Q. Cho has done some significant work to help people like you and me understand and apply these ancient practices. I've had the opportunity to learn from a lot of Master Cho and his son through the relatively scarce natural farming literature that is out there. And now I'd like to share a bit of my journey with you. We'll be coming out with a series of five videos detailing how a beginner to IMOs can get started bringing their soil back to life. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of those. If you can't wait till then, please go ahead and download my free ebook on IMO, Indigenous Microorganisms. This is a beginner's guide and it contains everything you need to know about how to collect, preserve, diversify, integrate, and apply IMOs into your soil. And there's even some recipe cheat sheets in the back. If you like this video, I'm guessing that there's someone that you know who might be in need of this kind of information. So go ahead and do them a favor, share this video with them. And don't forget to leave a comment with your questions or maybe your success stories of 
that you've had related to IMO collection. Can't wait to share with what I've learned with you guys. See you soon.